Because they want to say, you Christians believe a fairy tale. Well, if you've ever listened to how evolution is, that's the biggest fairy tale going. So this is definitely a religion and people are very faithful to it, aren't they? All right, go to the next one. This C should be capitalized, by the way. So what the world wants you to believe is what? All roads lead to heaven. Is that what the Bible teaches? No. My Bible teaches how many roads? One. Two roads. The broad road of destruction and the what? The narrow, the narrow road. There's two roads, right? All roads do not lead to heaven. But only one leads to heaven. Well, well. Yeah, there's only one. One leads to destruction and one leads to heaven. Right. And... Uh, Go to the next one. So what happens to those who change the Word of God? So is there a warning in the Bible about people who like to corrupt God's Word? Yes. Yes. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. It's a serious thing to mess with the Word of God, is it not? It absolutely is. It's a serious thing. And I'm going to go far to say that it's a serious thing to take the words of God and twist them and to change their meaning, right? To, to come up with ideas and principles that that's not what the Bible's teaching. We have to take it literally, just like they talked about in the school of the prophets in Antioch. They took it literal, and we have to believe it that way as well, right? Shiloh. So what is the truth about Jesus? John 14, 6. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and what? The life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's right. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. What is one of the names of Jesus? The Word, right? The Word became flesh. How important is the Word of God? It's so important. This book is the key to our salvation. And thus, it's, if this is the key to our salvation, we have to have the version that leads us to the right understanding of the will of God. Acts 14, 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It's it. This is it. Jesus. That name has to be in your heart. Your heart, Jesus, your first love, right? Our whole journey, our whole faith has to be centered in Christ. Our life, Christ-centered. His life, we must uh, try to imitate Him. He is our standard. The world is not your standard. I'm not your standard. Jesus is our standard. Shiloh. Jesus is the only way to heaven. So if these Gnostics want to go to heaven, they have to come to Christ. If the Hindus or the Buddhists or the Muslims or the, anybody, the scientists, if they want to go to heaven, it's through Jesus. They have to come to Him. That's why what we talked about this morning in our class, that our life, if we are professed Christians, have to reflect Jesus Christ. If we are going to turn the hearts and minds of the world to Jesus, we have to show them how wonderful Jesus is. And we can do that through our life reflecting Jesus Christ. Shiloh. Hebrews. For when the time you ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. So what it's saying here is there was a time that we needed to be taught the Bible. Is that right? We didn't know anything. We needed somebody who knew something about the Bible to teach us, right? And our become such has need of milk and not of strong meat. So when you're a new believer, you need to be taught, but in a way that you're not being dropped super heavy oracles, right? You need the basics, the fundamentals, right? You know, I played basketball my whole life and when I was in second grade at the park and rec what were they teaching me they were teaching me dribble the ball 
right? Keep my head up, how to box out. They were teaching me the fundamentals. Now, as you gain experience, then you can get more advanced, right? But you don't teach advanced moves to beginners. So when you're a new Christian, it's called milk, right? You, we're babes in Christ. We're baby Christians. It says, For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. So we don't know everything when we're new Christians. In fact, when I was baptized in 2003, I didn't know a lot about the Bible. I knew some basic fundamentals, but I didn't know everything. It says, But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age. So as we mature then we get into the deeper aspects of the Word of God and, and of the principles and things like that. It says, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. So, as we learn the basics and we get the basics, God wants us to go on. Right? Now, when I was a baby Christian, I used the NIV because it spoke in plain English and I could understand it, right? A lot of you read those versions because it speaks in a language that's easy to understand, which is fine, which was fine for me. But as I advanced, right, after learning the principles of the doctrines of Christ, so after I learned about Jesus, I learned the fundamentals, I wanted God to show me more. I wanted to grow and know more. It says, let us go on unto perfection. God wants to perfect our faith. And if we are to move on, the only way that you can be perfect is to have a Bible that shows you better how to do that. Is that right? You do not want to continue in your walk in a corrupt Bible because it will not lead you to perfection. Shiloh. Matthew 7, 16 to 20. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Now think of Bibles as the tree, right? So do we want a Bible that is corrupt or a Bible that is pure? A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit, good fruit is hewn down. What does that mean? Chop it down. It, 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 not good. Get rid of it, right? And cast into the fire so it's completely destroyed, right? Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. We want to grow. As Christians, we want to grow. We want our roots to go deep and we want our tree to grow and be tall. But the only way we can do that is if we have a good tree. And I believe that if God gave us his word to bring us into salvation, to bring us into the righteousness, it has to be a good version. Because if you're using a corrupt version, it will not lead you where God wants you to go. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass. God has preserved His word to the end, right? Even though Satan has tried to corrupt His word, God has preserved it, I believe, in this Bible. God has preserved His word for us today. And I believe it's found in the King James Version. This is the version that if you study it and you read it and ask the Holy Spirit, that truth will be found through it. As we saw before, it comes from the pure stream. And if we want to go on in faith and, and to grow, this is the version we need to use. This is from A Call to Stand Apart. The Word of God is the seed. Every seed has in itself a germinating principle. In it, the life of the plant is enfolded, so there is life in God's Word. Christ says, The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. John 6.33 He that heareth my word 
and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. John 5, 24. Is it important, the words of God? Is it important, the words of the Bible? Jesus says himself that they are given in his spirit and they are life. Not just life. What kind of life? Everlasting life. In every command and in every promise of the Word of God is the power, the very life of God, by which the command may be fulfilled and the promise realized. Do we want to realize the promises of God? Jonita shared her testimony. Did Jonita realize a promise from God? Absolutely. He who by faith receives the word is receiving the very life and character of God. So the version of the Bible that you read has to reveal the true character and nature of Jesus Christ. And if it does not, it's not any good for you. It will not lead you to everlasting life. What we want is the life and character of God, which is revealed through Jesus Christ. So if Jesus Christ is not exalted, then that version is no good for us. It's no good. Next one. This is where God wants us to be. He desires us to be here. He has given us His Word and shown us the way. If I could have the choristers come up here, I'm going to end with this. Pray, ask God to lead you to what is the best version. I've just shown you a little bit of history, but you must decide for yourself what version do you want to use?